Welcome to the Chicago Bears Podcast. A presentation of ESPN Chicago. Chicago's home for sports. Here's your host, Pat, the designer. Paradise on Chicago. We're back for another week of the Chicago Bears podcast. As always, I'm joined on a Monday by the dominant former Chicago Bear, Lance Briggs, in the building. We got so much to get into. What a weekend of Bears football. Lance, were you glued to your TV the entire weekend? I was. I was for numerous reasons. Uh, we had the draft going on. Uh, the the Kings Warriors, unfortunately, you know, the, the unfortunate I, demise. I, but big, Big Kings fan, would you? Huge. But an iconic, an iconic oh. effort took it out. Right, right, and and the thing about it, look, look, the, the there's a changing of the guard happening in the West. Yeah. You know, the 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 Kings, and I'm proud of them and and the season that they had. Um, they're on their way up. The Warriors are on their way out. You know, um, and it was a heck of a series. It was a heck yeah. of a series, and uh, but I'm I'm happy. There's promise for our future. Oh, <clears> the oh. other, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, was was the draft, yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, all eyes are on on our Bears and and seeing um, if if we're able to fill the right holes and bring in the right guys, uh, yeah. and that that story will be told once they hit the hit the field. Make sure yeah. that they stay healthy and they're pro- pro- uh, productive members of our f- football team. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's that's what it it's really going to be, right? On paper, everybody on paper is amazing, right? I can mm-hmm. I can come into and paint a, a sunny picture of every Bears team I've ever watched on paper. They haven't all panned out the way I've hoped to. So we'll definitely get into what happened at the draft. Looking at Ryan Poe's offseason as a whole, interesting information coming out about Chase Young, and maybe uh, the Bears might want to take a look at him. And then got to get Lance's thoughts on heading into uh, – what it's like to head into minicamp, man, because we, we, we got him here. We're going to get that insight. All that more on today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Drop a bear down in the comments if you're watching on YouTube right now. Hit that like button and leave a five-star review if you're listening on the podcast side. Appreciate you guys for showing love. Let's, let's get into the first quarter, first man. Let's do it. Listen, the draft was interesting, right? I I feel like for the first time, let's just look at day one here real quick. For the first time in Chicago Bears history, the Chicago Bears chose offense over defense. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a change happening here where they went to, no, our priority here is to focus on our quarterback, not to get that perfect three technique on paper, right on paper, that would make this defense click together. Lance, did the Chicago Bears make the right move on Thursday when they drafted Darnell Wright? Over Jalen Carr. Well, I think I think Ryan Poles made the right move for that that for him and what he thought was the best for for the Bears. You know, I, I look at it as as principle. You know, there's principles that uh, that Ryan Poles he he stands on, and there's a, a reason why you pass up a Jalen Carter and you go for a Darnell Wright. Um, when you talk about where they fit on offensively and defensively, I don't think it's as easy as saying um, we're we want the world to know that we're focusing on offense, you know, because we passed up the best available player there. I think on principle, you know, there were things that they thought, you know, this guy is a better fit for our Bears right now as opposed to Jalen Carter. Good luck to that young man and what he does in, uh, in Philly. You know, yep. uh, being back with Jordan Davis and all those things, they're going to be they're going to be uh, uh, dominant, I'm sure. But uh, for the Bears in 2023, moving forward, this is the right piece for us. Where we will listen, we're going to go get that piece too. We're going to go get the pieces that fit. But this is the right pit, fit for us right now. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's kind of what I've I've looked at with the draft, right? And it felt to me when you look at most of the draft that Ryan Poles went scheme fit over maybe what the sexy name might have been in that position. Speak to that for us for a second for the listeners out there. How much more important is scheme fit than just the big name? Of course, you want the best talent on your team, but yeah. the best talent on your team doesn't always fit your scheme. Right. You know, if, you, if, if you're if you playing a, a, a single gap, you know, get vertical uh, type of team, you want guys that can run. You know, so if you bring in the, the, the Vince Wilfork type defensive tackles, 
they're not going to be a good fit because you need guys that can get vertical and that can uh, that can that can uh, run to the ball once that ball is thrown and get to and make plays. That's how you make up for not only mistakes but you make you take that ball away. That's how you get become opportunistic as a defense uh, in this particular scheme. Uh, I played in a scheme under Dick Jaron where he wanted his defensive ends to be 280 pounds. Then I played for a Lovey Smith defense where he wanted his defensive ends to be 260, 250 pounds. You know, so it's 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 who fits the scheme or who can fit the scheme better, and that's I think that's kind of indicative of of uh, what you were asking. And and I mean, here's here's the counterpoint that a lot of people will say, and we'll probably see in the comments a little bit. By the way, if you are enjoying this content, drop it in the comments right now. You can also listen live on the ESPN One Thousand app, ESPN Chicago app. Tune in with us on that as well. Here's here's the counterpoint, right? If a player is that good, you fit your system to that player. Is that how it works in football? Yeah, was, uh, offen- offensively, it should, and defensively, it should to a point. Now, there's, you know, the 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 best the best defensive players are going to be guys that can fit just about any system. Right. However, if he if he's a if he's a three four guy that played three four in, in uh, every year in his in his co- all four years in college, and you put him in a uh, four three, um, it's not that he can't play it, but there are things that he has to learn. Yeah. Um, you know, to get to just a, a, from a comfortability factor, you know, I'm, I've been comfortable doing it this way. And now you're asking me to do it this way. I, I see where I fit, but it's going to take me a little time to get more, be, be more comfortable. Um, yeah. And so it's there's to, to me and offensively, listen, if if you if you have an all star run, you have a Bijan Rod- Robinson and and you put him in there and all you want to do is throw the ball. You're just wasting talent there. You yeah. know, you got him there. Utilize him in every way possible because he's such a a talent so you know it, it i think you would it would be a uh uh it would be a huge loss to the organization if you bring in talent and you don't change your scheme to to enhance what he can do or bring to the team looking through the rest of the draft i i really like some of the ways that i mean listen i thought he was going to trade up 9 to 53 felt like a chasm to me felt like you let a lot of talent go off of the board and you did of course i mean a lot of talent went off of the board there but then they start to attack that defensive line a little more in the in the uh, uh day two on day two right they go yeah. with uh Javon Dexter on the yep. defensive line they also uh add, exactly. added Pickens on the defensive line there as well but they didn't address the edge in this draft how much is that going to affect them this season but hoping that these guys right turn into what they're going to turn yeah. into you have more pressure in the middle but not having that solid edge guy how much is that going to affect this defense well dexter to me you know at least in his film he looks like a swing guy he looks like a guy that plays the edge and plays inside um, he's very tall. He's going to be a, a difficult guy to deal with. Um, obviously, Zach Pickens is an interior guy. Um, you already have Gibson outside that the, the, the Bears have moved into that starting position. There's some yeah. things that, that the Bears are going to try this year. You know, there's things are going to try. Um, uh, obviously, I don't think that that we're where they want to be. But you bring in Tremaine Edwins and and TJ Edwards. You know, you you you've got guys that that you can surround all these players with. Um, even if you don't fit each one of those positions, you have enough guys there. You have a great defensive backfield. You have, and, you have, and you're bringing in these draft picks. You're all going to compete. You have enough guys that you can get 11 hats to the ball each play. I think, I, and I, I also think that from a pass rush standpoint, we're, we're, we're better off this year or right now on paper than we were last year. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that, right? I mean, I, I feel like I looked at the pass rush last year, and the biggest problem to me was depth. You just didn't have enough bodies that could get back. I think that that's something that the Ryan Poles did a really, really solid job trying to address in this draft. Uh, I, I look all the way down to right, even going out and getting Noah Sewell. I saw a lot of people giving that a, a negative draft grade, uh, which draft grades, by the way, I, I don't I don't pay attention to any draft grades. Once I saw the draft grade on uh, uh, the Seattle Seahawks draft where Russell Wilson went and, and Bobby Wagner went, and it was, this is why Pete Carroll was out of the NFL the first time. This is one of the worst drafts we've ever seen. So the draft grades mean nothing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of this. I, I, what, but what what go ahead. what I see what I see is is polls has created 
a, a, a culture of competition. Yeah. You know, you have all these draft picks. You have we already have what I think is is one of the better defensive backfields in uh, in the NFL. But you bring in a ton of these these defensive backs. Um, we obviously we have uh, he filled some needs at, at uh, defensive line. Yeah, you know, Dexter could be a swing man. We never know. But there's there's a level of competition that's good that we're going to get the best. They're, these guys are going to come out. They're going to compete. They're going to compete for starting jobs. They're going to compete for backup jobs. They're going to compete for special teams jobs. Yeah. You know, and and the battles are going to be won there. Some of these guys are going to be on this team because of how great of a, a special teams player they can be. And and that's it's a three phase deal. It's offense, defense, special teams, and a, not a two phase deal. You win all three of those phases, then then your chances of winning go sky high. So yeah. I, I love the I love the culture of us of of bringing in guys and them all having to compete. You know because there's not going to be enough room for everybody. So who's going to stick and who's going to go? How much of that? How much of that going in? Right, like you you've of course been through a million draft classes coming in to to uh, to Hallis Hall and new guys are there, new linebackers being selected, whatever it is, right? How much of that is like, hey, they didn't brought this dude in here trying to take my job? Like, what the, what's what's the game plan on this? Or is it or is it just, hey, we all pulling on the rope at the same time? That's the well, that's the nature of the beast. You know, they're, they're, your your coaching staff they're, they're they're constantly trying to bring in somebody that can replace you. You know, they can get somebody better for a cheaper price. Um, you know, and, and that's. You, you have to – that was always welcoming. I, I was understood in the beginning, but it was welcoming. I was a guy that Lovey didn't like in the beginning because I ran a 4-7-40, you know. He was like, he's not fast yeah. enough, you know, and there were guys on the – on the um in the staff, you know, and with the, in the Bears front office that said, hey, just watch him play, just watch him play, you know. And that was one of those things. He was one of the coaches that had to had to really win over, you know. And, and, I, and I know that from playing from the years that I played with him – uh, certainly probably changed Lovey's mind on on how he approaches weak side backers. You know, yeah. he was in the Derrick Brooks mode, like Derrick Brooks is a four five five guy. You know, you have to be this right here. And and I was a different mode than than Derrick Brooks, you know. So it's <clears throat> so it, you know, it's just it's 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 all the evaluation period. I think there's a there's a huge evaluation period and depending on who fits what and how they're gonna how they're gonna play out. It's it's always right. Like I feel like when we're looking at the next guy, how much does mm-hmm. that push you? Right, like a Noah Sewell coming in. To me, Noah Sewell coming in is the guy that's going to push Jack Sanborn, if anything. Right, I think T.J. Edwards and, and Tremaine Edmonds are already locked in. But even like Justin Jones, guys like that, they're talking about uh, J- Javon Dexter coming in and. and fighting for the starting nose tackle position or playing starting on the edge, right? How much does that push you to just, okay, nah, I, I, don't, I don't know who y'all thought he was going to be, but he's not taking my job. That's the way, that's the way your attitude should be uh, uh, every day. You know, you should go out there and try to, and, and want to prove that you are, not only do you belong on that defense, but, but uh, you were part of the core. You yeah. know, you want to be real, recognized as part of the core of the defense. When you're part of that core, you can't you can't lose the core. You yeah. know, and so you know, for for Sewell that's coming in, um, uh, block out the noise, man. Block out the noise. Go out. You make plays. the The key is to get the best eleven on the field, right? So if you if you're one of the best eleven, how does how are we going to keep you off the field? Yeah. You know, what I mean, at, at, at worst. You know, we we trade you, get some value, you go somewhere else, and you become one of their starting eleven. <clears throat> yeah. But everything that you put on your, your resume is what you go out in that field and you put out, and that tape's going. Everybody gets to see that, you know. And so when you get into that preseason, regardless of your situation, when you get out there, you play your tail off. You're gonna you're creating a lane for yourself, uh, and for everybody, every player that comes in, you know, it's it should it's not his fault that that uh, he played better than you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to play well. So any guy that any young guy that came in or or uh, a free agent that came in when when uh, Brian and I were playing for the Bears, uh, I did my best to try to help you to to understand how we play the game, how the we play it, how we play the weak side. If you're playing weak side, this is what you have to look out for. This is how you have to play it. I want to give you the best opportunity as possible to try to beat me out. That, it, 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 I know that sound, may sound funny, but I know that, listen, you've got a family you want to eat. You want to, yeah. you've got to feed, you know, you have a life, you know, and if you can beat me out, then so be it, you know, yeah. I, I, but I want, I want to give you every edge, every possibility, p- possible uh, know-how and knowledge 
to be the best weak side backer or Mike backer or Sam backer um, um, to let, allow you to compete. And if you can beat me out, so be it. But I don't believe you can beat me out. <laughs> who who was the player that pushed you the most while you were still a fan? Who was the dude that you was like, hey, man, this dude might be coming. Hold on now. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't, it, you know, the, I, I played with a lot of good guys, a lot of good guys. I think, you know, Jamar, Jamar Williams, he, he comes to mind. He was a heck of a, a, a linebacker uh, <clears throat> and he can play. And I remember getting hurt and I got hurt and he had, you know, over the next two games, he had something like 20 tackles or 20, yeah, 26 yeah, yeah. tackles or so, you know, <clears throat> and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a deal where it was like, man, uh, this guy is good. I'm, I think he's going to beat me out. It was more of this guy is a really good linebacker. Like I, I, you know, I think he's one of our best three. You know, yeah. or he should be one of our best three. Whatever it is, you know. But never have I, never have I thought I was like on the field and watching a guy and thinking he was that good. And I was like, he's he might be a little bit better than me. No, hey, I don't talk work, your talk, I, I don't work like talk that. Talk man. Talk <laughs> <laughs> Tell him, hey, I ain't never been on the field to somebody who's better than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> on the yeah. is better than me, <laughs> and you know, but that's that's the the way your mentality should be. That's yeah. the way your mentality should be. You know, I, there will, you know, I was, I always wondered, will there be a day where I would, where I would have to, you know, deep down, because you can, you can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to yourself. Yeah, where I would say, you know, listen, this guy, I think this guy might be better than me. You know, but but in the years that I played, yeah, I I I never felt that. Hey, listen, that's the, that's saying something, dog. You got some dogs standing next to you out there, man. I mean, take, take that for what you want to take it, buddy. Yeah, I mean, let's say ain't nobody stopping him. Anyway, uh, with with everything uh, that we saw this weekend, man, how you feeling about about uh, what Poles did, what this front office did, and and really their first draft with first round picks? I mean, again, the stuff on paper, I like yeah. what they did, you know, and I'm sure that they're happy with what they did. Yeah, yeah it's, everybody's it's, high fiving in the draft room. The Lions yeah. were high fiving the running back at, at twelve, and everybody else in the world is like, "Huh? What you just?" <laughs> right. It, it, you know, it's but it's it's a prove it league. You know, these guys. This is this is just the first step for these draft picks. Yeah. You know, there's there's uh, cohesiveness. You know, guys, they're gonna play with guys, and how how do they fit? Where do they fit? Yeah. Um, um, they have to know who they're competing. They're going to get into this, this, this deal with these older guys, these veterans and stuff, and they'll be in a separate locker room. And we have to, there's things that we have, they have to figure out, you know, which guy am I really competing with? Am yeah. I a swing man? Am, if, if I go out and I play well here, um, and I play, I play well, the coaches see me, are they going to move me here? Am I, am I at left guard now? I'm going to be at right guard tomorrow. You know, it's, there's pieces, and and you have to go out. They have to show the guys, the the coaches that that we can trust trust you enough to put you on that field come September. Yeah, I mean, Bears, listen, they they're no stranger to young guys trying to make plays out here. Led the NFL in first year and rookie snaps last season by I believe a thousand snaps. So nice. uh, they're coming in, they're going young. I, I love the mentality. I thought they did. Uh, again, it's got to play out on the field. I thought that they addressed a lot of the needs yes. that we talked about them needing to address, which yes. means that it, it's validating what we're seeing on the field that, yeah, Ryan also sees the same yeah. thing we're seeing. I feel like we've uh, we, we, we've had people in the building before who were like, well, you got to go here. It's like, nah, but over there looks great. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. What's wrong with over there? I don't know. Uh <laughs> As we're keeping this moving along, man, appreciate you guys for yeah. showing love. We got Lance Briggs in the building on a Monday, man. Hit that like button if you haven't done so. Drop a bear down if you haven't done so. And make sure that you're listening in on ESPN Chicago. We're we'll live Monday through Friday. Hope is to have the podcast out by 2 p.m. every single day. Some people come on later. Some people come on earlier. Mm. If you get the podcast earlier. Enjoy mm -hmm. yourself. If you get it later, just know it's a fire episode waiting for you. Let's keep it pushing along as we get into the second quarter here. As we now, I, I feel like we have a bit of a clear picture on everything that we've seen. And so I want to get your opinion on this. When we're looking at what Ryan Poles has done, not just in the draft, but in the offseason as a whole, where's your confidence level in Ryan Poles being the GM of the Chicago Bears, being, being the guy that's going to lead the Chicago Bears out of what we've seen for the last – five six seven years my my confidence is hopeful hopefully high 
it's a hopeful high confidence that um, I, 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 and in that hopeful meaning, I, I really love what he's done so far. And the product that gets put on the field this fall, I just wanted to confirm my hopeful. You know, yeah. how I feel about him. I, I, I just want to confirm it, you know, rather than be in a defensive stance and say, listen, he made the right picks. They just didn't pan out. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It's one yeah. of those, you know what I mean? You know, it's – it's he he made he made picks that if I were a GM, I would have done the same thing or similar things. You know, there are things, there are principles, there are standards, there are things that you have that go into how you're going to select. And um, I think as a, as a Bear fan – we all can agree with a lot of the things that he's picked. He doesn't. I don't think he's gone far extreme left or extreme right. You know, uh, from from where we were thinking. You know, he's been pretty much right down the middle. Maybe we didn't get one guy that we really like, but the 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 backup choice would be. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Yeah, was it was he too safe? This is the thing, right? There's there's a lot of guys that like to swing for the fences, guys, right? I think mm-hmm. I think he, he, oh he he was confident in what he did and he was ballsy, but the swing for the fences guys get us Mitch. So yep. <laughs> you know You're absolutely I mean? right. You know what I mean? Swinging for the yep. fences. Guess what? Uh, you thought it was gone, but somebody snatched it before it was a home run. You're out. And so right. I, I think right, like I, I feel like Ryan Poles played it a little bit safer. Outside of the DJ Moore trade, maybe that's the one time where I thought he went a little bit, okay, we're going to, because you have the number one overall pick, you have pick of the litter, we're going to move this ad capital and go for a big swing with DJ Moore. But outside of that, does it feel like he's just been kind of vanilla on a lot of the things that he's doing? Or does it feel like, no, these are just the right moves? I think they're the right moves. Listen, they have a lot of people in that in that building that are analyzing uh, the the college players pro players, uh, uh, situations uh, at all levels, uh, you know, they, you know, what if they knew already about the, the, uh, the chase young situation, Yeah, you know, they already know they're like, okay, well, look, there's an opportunity there where, you know, in this draft, we address this free agency, we address this, you know, and the more likely if we have an opportunity, you know, we can add with, with him, you know, there's, just yeah. as far as decisions are, are being made, um, um, the ability to be two steps ahead, um, um, it, it, it's I don't want to say it, it, it's it's just one of those things where we see we see what we see and we we uh, um, we talk about it. We we go back and forth. We trade notes on what we think the the best the Bears should should be doing or the decisions they should be making. But right. their analytics, their in depth should be two steps ahead of what we're thinking. Yeah, for sure. I, I listen, if, if the GM's on the same page with me, he, we in trouble. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, I like to pride myself in, in being a little bit smarter in football right. than, than the average football fan. But uh, yeah. if Ryan Poles is taking cues for me, we in trouble. Even though everybody's out here saying he looks – me and him are, are brothers out here. They say we look a lot alike. I, I don't know if I see it, dog. I don't know if I. There's a, there's a little. I mean, if you take the glasses off, there's a slight I mean, similarity. You take the slight. Woo! Like, <laughs> oh, come on, dog. Don't woo me, dog. Come on now, bro. I, I basically look like every mixed dude ever, according to. Uh, look, I'll be sure. Oh, yeah. Like. I get I'll be sure I'll I get the sure. educated brother from the bank. If you know that, you, you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you know yeah. who that one is, you're good people out here. Shout out to you. But no, nah, man, I uh, uh, keep keep doing what you're doing. Right. If I can get my glasses back on, I'm blind out here. Keep doing what you're doing. Right. Doing great things. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when, when again, when you're looking at right, uh, everything now encompassing what we brought in, where where are your expectations on what this team actually has to produce? The NFC North is not the kind con- we talked about. This is not the the most dominant conference that you're going to be in in the NFC. It's not the most mm-hmm. dominant conference you're going to be in in football. You're going to have a path to wins. Where's your expectation level now with everything we've seen this offseason? Is it greater on Justin? Is it now I have more expectation on Justin, more expectation on this coaching staff to get the most out of them? Where are you at with that? Uh, uh, well, my expectation for for the let's start offensively. My expectation is for more production. From the offense, uh, yeah. I, I saw plenty of production from Justin Fields, uh, but the, you add in the production of the offense, the, you 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 find the right pieces for your five offensive linemen. 
you have weapons, you have running backs, you know, how well we run the ball, you know, in this upcoming year, in my opinion, will will determine how great uh, Justin Fields will be able to pass the ball. Yeah. You know, how how great we're able to protect, how great we're able to have uh, uh, um, um, get push from our from our offensive linemen will will determine how great of a season not only Justin Fields has, but our offense and our team. Defensively, you know, we we plug in the pieces that we have. We get to the ball. We get those guys. We get 11 hats to the ball. We're, we're going to do some special things. We'll do some great things defensively. And we'll look for and we'll continue to look for pieces. We have two first round picks next year. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, you know, as 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 good as on, on paper as I think the selection was uh, in the off season in the draft. You know, we've got some picks next year to help fill in those holes, fill in more holes if we find any holes this year or wherever those holes are. So I'm 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 just very optimistic about the the future. I feel like we're finally right. Like it feels like the bears are getting into the modern era of the NFL. Listen, I love the defensive side of the football, probably more than most. I'm a Chicago and it's what we thrive off of defense and hard hitting. That's, that's, that's what our team is known for. But in the modern NFL, right? The best defenses in the NFL are, are, are winning playoff games, 30 to 27 or losing playoff games, 30 to 27. Now, you know what I mean? We rarely see those low scoring games happen until maybe the Super Bowl. No, that was a, no, we had some, some low scoring playoff games last year, Pat. We had some now you get you take away the, the you have the Chiefs. You right. have the Chiefs and you have the Eagles. Right. right? But even the, the Eagles defense were holding teams, they were holding teams to a low to a low scoring uh yeah. uh most throughout the throughout the season. You know, you there's there's there are the anomalies, but it, you know, we, we were a few years ago where people said, you know, hey, uh the modern day defense, they don't hold points anyway, it's all about scoring. And if you watch this year in the NFL, there were some of the lowest scoring on average games around the league than there has been in previous years. You yeah. know, so it, it's it's all about it's all about adjustment for defenses. You know, you get new rules, things you can and cannot do. And then you also have new wrinkles in offense. But once you get adjusted defensively, do you understand exactly? Okay, we're gonna we know how we got to play it now. All right, but there's a there's always an adjustment period. But I don't think you you change mentality mentally to be a bend but don't break defense or yeah, yeah. let's outscore them, you know, offensively. Because if you say let's outscore them offensively, that completely handicaps you as a, a mentally as a defensive player. You right. know, what I mean, oh, let's leave it into our offense's hands to save right. us. Well, I I think the difference that I see at least from now to like when y'all were playing is you guys could win a game like you could win it. Like 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 it would be like 13 to 7 and it would be a defensive score and that would yeah. be like a game that's that's going into the playoffs or that's that's getting you to that to the Super Bowl whatever it is, right? I don't think we see that that often anymore in today's NBA. I think we see the defensive moments, right? We talk about I think the the biggest player in the Super Bowl is the last sack that Aaron Donald gets on Joe Burrow, right? And a huge defensive player, your biggest defensive player showed up. But at the same time, that was still a very, very high scoring game. DBs end up getting, I ain't gonna lie, Jalen Ramsey getting cooked in that game. Nobody talks about that. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I think you guys were more of a, we can put this on our back, probably by need, right? But yeah. I don't think that we see that as much anymore. Well, if you, here's, here's my thoughts on that. Um, yeah. If, if you don't see that, um, then to me, that's a, it's a breakdown in, in in the mental makeup of either the 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 defensive coordinator allowing it or the defensive players that allow that that type of mentality to spew through your unit. Um, mm -hmm. You should you, you, defenses should should defend every blade of, of grass on that field, and that's the way make them earn everything. The offenses can only take what defenses allow. You know, and that, and that still holds true today. So if you're not playing the game the right way, if you're not if you're not sharp, if if you're not doing the fundamental things that got you there, especially in training camp, you're not doing those things in the, during the season. You're allowing yeah. this or you're allowing that pass to happen in practice. That's where the stuff starts to creep in, and that stuff starts to creep in. It becomes little things become big things. 
Yeah. You know, so defensively, you have to have a mentality. And I've, we've seen some defense. You've seen in the Indianapolis Colts in recent years be a ball hawking, 11 guys, hats to the ball, a Matt Eberflus coach defense that got to yeah. the ball and made plays. You know, and, and you're going to you're gonna see units like that. You saw a very dominant Philadelphia Eagles defense that just added more talent. You know, so uh, I, I think I think it starts it starts up here, um, yeah. and and uh, and it finishes when the whole unit uh, understands the same thing. I like that breakdown of it. I'm not gonna lie, I because I, I think there is a reliance, right? Like yeah. you, you for you guys. No disrespect to anybody who played quarterback with you, but there wasn't a ton of offense going on, right? I feel right. like you guys had the mentality of if we don't stop. Th- then we don't win. Right. I don't know this mentality with the best teams anymore. To your point, right? I mean, because I got Josh Allen on the other side. I got Pat Mahomes on the other side. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, listen, we had some players. We did have some players offensively. I, we went through a lot of quarterbacks. And, and you know, as as, you know, you know, the strength, the strength of of the Bears was really uh, the defense and the special teams. You yes. know, we did certain things and 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 special teams. You know, just by having Devin Hester back there, a lot of times we started the ball in the plus 40, you know, right. which allowed us to be able to be already in field goal, field goal range. Right. Um, right. You know, but uh, but it, it's, uh, you know, regardless if it's if it was us back then or the guys that are in place now, um, the it 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 it. It starts up front. You got to rush. You got to cover. But if you get those eleven guys understanding that, <clears throat> make them go the long, hard way. You know, make them fight. Make them earn every yard, every inch. Uh, and every time they catch that ball, we make them pay. We get we rip that ball out and we score on defense. Yeah. Um, now you're you're taking things to another level. You know, and you you're understanding things on a different level. Uh, and and I'm I'm we're starting to see that. We're starting to see the the effort more effort from from the the bears i think one of the one of the prime examples uh is is uh is eddie eddie jackson you know coming uh-huh. into last year coming into last season he was one of the biggest question marks that i had uh for this defense yeah um but i saw i saw eddie jackson that that to me played at at an all pro level i think from a physical standpoint from to being where he needed to be in pass coverage, uh, I was I was I was re re energized on Eddie Jackson and and how he fits in his defense. I think he he's a he's in a leadership role, and what I saw last year, uh, I think he's in the role that he should be a leadership role if he continues down that same trend. Man, we talking some good ball out here, yo. We got to keep the show moving along. But man, that was some good defensive talk. We gonna keep the defensive talk going though as we get to the third quarter because, like, like you mentioned in in that right, like maybe Ryan Poles was thinking three, four, five steps ahead of the rest of us because all of a sudden we get the news this weekend that the mm-hmm. Washington Commanders got to That's right. My brain still still got to switch my brain on that. Um. May di- won't be picking up Chase Young's fifth year option, and maybe looking to move on from him. Should the Chicago Bears be in on Chase Young? Is that Ryan Pohl's first big swing to try and add a huge piece to this defense that you've already got made up? We talked about the edge rushers. What do you think on Chase Young right now? I don't know. Uh, it, it, answer you could it, get. All right. I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell you why I'm going to tell you why. Um, sometimes you, you, you have to be wary about the, the carrot that's dangling in front of your face. Right. Um, you have to do some research on this. Uh, Chase Young is too big of a talent. You know, he's too great of a talent for them not to pick up that, that fifth option and to say, and to basically open the doors to, Hey, we are, are open to trade this guy. Yeah. Um, you know, we're open. We're looking for offers. So we can get some value out of him. Uh, you know, the, the number one, the how's the recovery going? How is he? Right. How is the how's that injury affected him? Right. And, you know, because, uh, you know, and I, and I hate to use the term, but we throw the sink and we give them all these picks and we end up getting a lemon out of Chase Young, uh, uh, you know, shades of the the for, the player formerly known as Chase Young. 
Yeah. That's a huge win for the commanders. And that's yeah. that's another step back for us that we didn't have to take. So there are some things in, that you have to research in this in getting him back. And then it's at what cost to get him. You know, if we can do it for a reasonable cost, yeah, you know, let's we can try it out. But if the cost is too high, then it's it's it may not be worth it may not be worth the grief. You know, so there's yeah. a lot of things that go into play here. And it was a compound injury as well. So he tore the right ACL, uh, mm-hmm. causing him to miss the last seven games. But he also ruptured his patellar tendon, which caused a longer reto- recovery time. So it's not just the torn ACL. I feel like now, right, like, first off, AP made torn ACL seem like it was nothing. So <laughs> a lot of people look at it he's like a, it's nothing. He's a I'm different saying. human. He's a different hey. type of human being. Uh, what did, what did Kobe say? Are you a different animal but the same beast? You know what I mean? Like, that, ah. that, that was ridiculous what we saw from him. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the fact that it's two injuries, right, the ruptured patellar tendon and a torn ACL, do you think that that maybe, though, brings the value down of what you're trading back as far as compensation? And maybe you take a flyer on it, right? Is it worth it, it in, in the end? Right? <laughs> to me, here's the thing. Are we a chase young away from me feeling great about this defense? Whew. I mean, absolutely a healthy, a healthy yeah. Chase Young that's playing the way he played when he first got in. Yeah. Um, I, absolutely, you know. But and 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 just the fact that 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 door is open, you got to test those waters and see. Hey, would you would you take a would you take a two? You know, would you take a two? Would you take a three next year? What can I? You know, what can we can we can we strike a deal here? Or is this yeah. is this a we're only taking first round picks? You know, but you got to test the waters a little bit. But yeah, we're defensively. I don't. You know, I'd like to see how we perform this year. I'd like to see how we perform. It's it's hard for me to to gauge. You know, if we're a chase chase young away because we're always a, a chase one chase young type of player away from yeah. from from uh, 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 raising our defense to a higher stand to a to a higher level. Yeah. But um, but I I I just. I watched our defense play last year, and I watched. I saw a difference last year than the year before. Uh, so I'm expecting uh, even more effort from this year than I saw last year with more talent, you know, and with more talent than they had last year. Uh, um, I expect to the production levels to be higher. So you know, it, we'll, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a production based business, and you got to see the production before you can make an evaluation. What does adding in a player like that do? Like you guys had so many big names on your defense, but just adding in a player like that, what does that do to invigorate a defense to, to right? Like we always think about it in the X's and O's on the field, but right. Chase Young was a monster when he was on the field. And if you know, you got that coming in, I think of the Khalil Mack effect when he first got here, what does that do when you're in that locker room? You think of a Khalil Mack, you think of a Julius Peppers when, when you know that they're going to be on that defense, when you know, he's going to be in a part of this defense, you know, Right now, we're we're going to find whoever the weakest lineman is on our opponent, and we're going to create a one-on-one and yeah. allow him to just go get it. You know, there were times where Peppers would line up at nose, he would line up at three tech, he would line up at defensive end, left or right, really? based I'll off of that. based off of who we knew we could take advantage of. Yeah. You know, and if we can do that, he may not get the sack, but we're going to create the pressure that that ball has to come out earlier, or we're going to flush him to somebody to get the other set to get this to get that set so but we knew by moving him and putting him on their weakest lineman that yeah. we can create something there <clears throat> that's 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 so funny the first time i'd ever heard about somebody doing that jason kelsey was just talking about it with jj watt he said i only lined up against the one time and it's because i guess when he got up against me I played well enough that he didn't say I was the weakest lineman on the line. So he didn't attack me anymore. But but it's, it's always like that level of ver- – so you think Chase Young is that level of versatile player even if we add him to this team? Well, if, you, if, you, if he's – if he's the, if he's the, the old Chase, Chase Young. If he's the Chase Young that, that everybody evaluated coming out of Ohio State and like yes. you got to have that kid, yes. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially in this defense, in in this Everflu's defense, that's yeah. something that you can do with a talent like that. <clears throat> Man, 
I, I'm intrigued by Chase Young. I don't know what it would cost to get him. I mean, listen, the, the commanders have asked for some wild prices on stuff out here. But they, they, they want first round picks for everybody pretty much. So I don't know if it's going to take a first round pick to get him. But his his health is such a question mark. And then on top of that, right, he's in that fifth year. You, ha- you have to re-sign him. Do you take a flyer knowing that maybe you're going to let him walk away if he doesn't want to be here? Mm-hmm. That's so many, so many question marks going into that in, into that whole situation, man. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, if he plays well this year, you know, that th- then then all of a sudden when he's going to hit that market, they franchise him. You know, yeah. there's <clears throat> it's just <clears throat> it's a it's a it's an interesting situation, and I hope I hope that he in health he plays this year. He he plays lights out. I really do. Oh, I hope he's a monster. Listen, as long as he's not playing for anybody against us, don't go to the Packers. Don't go to the Lions. Please don't go to the Lions. I don't need Chase Young and Aiden Hutchinson on the side. Mm. Please don't go to the Lions. I don't need that at all. I uh, appreciate you guys for showing love. I'm having a great time. Let's close it out with this, Lance. We got one more thing because it's time to pick Lance's brain. This is my favorite part of the show where we pick the professional's brain and I basically just shut up and uh, drink my coffee. Uh, Lance, mm-hmm. you drafted to this franchise. Yes. You get into the fourth quarter. What was it like for you? And what do you think these rookies are going to now that they've been drafted? And you're heading into now work. You're heading into there's no more school. There's no more. It's just football. Rookie mini camp, training camp. What's the mindset going into the process that they're in right now? Uh, well, it was cold. That's what it was. I left. Uh, <laughs> I left. Uh, I left uh, Arizona. It was 100 and probably 10, 10, probably 110 degrees. Yeah. It was May. And yeah. I came out for our first, uh, our first mini camp and I'm getting ready to walk out. And I remember Warwick Holdman at the time, he, he looks at me, he starts laughing. He was like, you better go put some long sleeves on. He's like, don't be fooled because the sun's out. It's cold outside. <laughs> and I remember taking about three steps outside the door and turning around, going running back to my locker to put, to put a long sleeve on. Because <laughs> it was deceptively cold. No, uh, nobody, um, nobody told you about them Chicago winters, man. That that last end of May and June and July. <laughs> but you, listen, this is right. But you don't. You're looking out. And I, and I know that I, I I took a. We had a. We had. A, we got in a van. Like a, it was a group of us rookies that all drove, rode over in the same van or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I knew it was a little chilly when I got out of the van and went into the building. But yeah. the sun was out. I'm like, there's not a cloud in the sky. How can it be yeah. that cold? You know, and it was freezing outside. So, <clears throat> so that was one of the first things that I learned about Chicago. Don't play around with the weather. And then, uh, and then getting out there, just getting out there with the guys, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, I want to say it was a race. It was a big race for me, like a racetrack. But th- for me, I had to, I had to play every one of the linebacker positions. Yeah. So I knew I was like, this is going to take a while because it wasn't, I don't get to just focus on one position. They're yeah. like, you're right. Lance, you're playing weak side right now. All right, go to Sam. All right, two plays later. All right, go to Mike. You know, and I'm trying. I'm like, all right, shoot, where do I line up? All right, and, and you know, I got guys pushing me to the ref, pushing me to the right. Yeah. And I'm like, just you know, I'm just you know, if if nothing else, I may not know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna run to this ball. I'm gonna run <laughs> to the ball, and I, that's that's all I know how to do. I'm getting yelled at left and right. Briggs, you can't go that way. Briggs, you know, but at least I'm gonna run to the ball. <laughs> how, how how thick how thick was the the book the playbook that they gave you because you had to play all of those positions how thick was that first playbook that you got from them greg blotch's playbook was big he had a lot of plays um there was a lot and and it was and so when it the i want to say like the first day they let me just play weak side backer yeah and then um and then they flipped it said all right today you're playing sam so i was like okay all right, let me let me let me do what I can to figure out what I where I need to be on Sam, and right. then they went. All right, now you're gonna play all three. I'm like, well, in my head, <laughs> I'm like, well, you let me focus on weak side one day, then Sam the other day, yeah, and now I'm doing all three. I didn't even get a chance to to focus on Mike for one day. So you know the when you talk about you know hey you, the learning process and stuff like that, it's it's. It's it's a little different when you you're playing all three at the same time, you know, when you're flipping play to play and offenses are the offenses aren't just running, you know, I formation. They're running everything. They're running spread. They're motioning here and there, 
and you have to make those adjustments. So it's a it's a process. It's a process. How how long did it take you to get the full playbook down? Uh, I don't know if I really fully got the full playback book down. Um, I was, you know, I, I, they allowed me to start playing Sam in, yeah. uh, in, in, in training camp. I played Sam and then I played all the positions because once the starters were out where they just shuffled us around. Right. Uh, and then toward the end of training camp, uh, it was okay. You're the backup weak side backer and then you're competing for the starting uh, weak side backer and nickel. And you're the uh, you're competing for starting at Sam, you right. know, and and ended up winning that job uh, on on week four of the season. Warwick Holdman gets hurt, so now I'm the starting weak side backer, and never never looked back after that. Can't go wrong there, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I think that uh, the right decisions were made on that. First of all, uh, it worked out for you very. I well. would have to agree with you. It, it worked out. And listen, Super Bowl appearance. Uh- <laughs> One of the most dominant defenses of all time. I'm just saying. Uh, here's 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 the por- portion of the show where the fans get to ask the questions as well. As we get into the two minute drill here to close things out, this is always my favorite part because um, the questions that come in, I have to filter quite a few of them because people want to ask you some wild stuff, Lance. So we're not we're not we're not gonna go hard on this, but I felt I appreciate this was- that. From uh, Chicago Sun Times, uh, Lance, what is your best rookie hazing story? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> hey, hey, this is my that's favorite thing about asking former players stuff. Whenever y'all smile and do the little head tilt to get down, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <clears throat> um, story. <laughs> you know, you know what? It has to be. It ha- it would have to be peanut. It have to be peanut. Um, uh. I remember, uh, I remember Ted Washington. <laughs> peanut, peanut ran his mouth a lot. He talked a lot, and the older yeah. guys didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so which is one of the reasons why I didn't have much of a problem, or they didn't have much problem with me because I was quiet. I, I shut my mouth and I just played football. But Peanut liked to talk, and Ted Washington. I remember Ted Washington. There were, we had the the big blue laundry uh, baskets that you would throw all your laundry in, and they would wash, and then. You know, all that stuff was out there when you got out of your locker room out of practice and stuff. Yeah. And I remember Ted Washington tell, telling Peanut to jump in there. <laughs> so Peanut looked at me, and then he looked at Ted. He said, jump in there. And so Peanut jumps in, and Ted gets behind the uh, the laundry mat, and he said, make a noise like a car. So Peanut, <laughs> Peanut's like, he said, drive the car. So Peanut's like, <laughs> and he said, and he so when he when he said when I crash, you make a crashing noise, and when you roll the thing, it would crash into a wall, and Peanut would go crash. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, think about it, think about it, like you know, I was you know I was there, we, we, we all those rookies, we'd help Peanut up and. Yeah. First thing I say is you did that. That's because you run your mouth, man. That's because you run your mouth all the time. You always talking. <laughs> you, just, you just put it on him, man. Hey, this, this on you. You deserve this. One. This is mm-hmm. it. Is like, <laughs> hey, but the, the 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 vets don't take the rookie running his mouth as confidence. It's just it's just getting the best. They, they say yeah, the the term of rookies are to be seen, not to be heard. Oh know? man. That's funny. That is great. That's good. Definitely getting clipped up for you two. Uh, <laughs> so nobody ever messed with you. Nobody ever made you do anything crazy. No, I mean, I carry, I carried pads. I carried, I carried guys' pads. I, I went up. I, I did my skit in front of the team. You yeah. know, but but like I said, I was, I was, I was quiet. I was quiet. <laughs> I was quiet until until until. I earned my right to talk. Till week four. Till week four. Uh, then, then you couldn't set me up. All right. <laughs> <right>? You know? <laughs> week, week four, you was talking again. Hey, hey you, you was on the on, on the deep. I'll be quiet. I'll be <laughs> quiet. I'm, I'm talking, talking again. again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Mando over on the YouTube side asks, was drafting a pair of defensive tackles who can both play one and three technique early a pre-draft strategy? He think you in the locker room on this one. But do you think that that was a pre-draft strategy by Poles? Well, you had mentioned before, you know, from from 32 to 51, there were there were a lot of value. There's a lot of value taken. 
Yeah, uh, especially at the D. I think there was a def- two defensive ends taken right before we we were able to pick. Yes. You know, I'm sure the Bears probably would have taken one of those defensive ends. They would have at least taken that defensive end first and then gone with the defensive tackle uh, after that. But you you take the best available, you know, that fits your scheme. Um, yeah. And at the time, you know, if they if there was a few of those defensive ends still on the board, they would have taken them. Yeah, uh, but I think you 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 they took the right guys because at that point you know these are the guys that that have the most value. These are the yeah. guys that can play at a high. If we believe can play at the highest level, you know, rather than it be more of a roll of the dice. Maybe he can. Maybe you know, not sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> that I think was uh, some of the basis on on those selections. I, I, I like it too because it, it right even you're saving they probably wanted to move up to close that gap we'd heard they wanted to move up back into the first round on mm-hmm. day one but I mean realistically right wh- how much draft capital is it costing you we saw them move up for Tyreek Stevenson I think he's going to be a perfect fit in this defense for the Chicago mm-hmm. Bears six feet tall 198 pounds I think he's going to mm-hmm. fit in the slot so you're trying to use your picks in the best spot available correct uh, one more before we get up out of here um, before you came to the NFL, who was your favorite football team growing up? San Francisco 49ers. Um, I was uh I was huge with the the Niners during the Joe Montana era. Yeah, you know, uh, I I would really like, you know, John Taylor, Jerry Rice, uh, you know, Ronnie Lott, that that squad man um was big. They really got me uh into becoming a, a football fan you know because they were winning so many super bowls and i was a kid and i was like whoa this is what it's all about um i was i i i, I rooted i definitely rooted for the raiders uh when the raiders came back to oakland you know yeah. there were years where I, I i certainly pulled for them but uh those were those were my teams i had a you know it's funny is because i had a one of my one of my best friends growing up he had these tapes. He's he he's like, you gotta watch this. And he popped this tape in. It was games of the '85 Bears, and I I you know we play football, out, we play football, and he talked about the bear. He wear bear stuff. I'm like, why are you a Bears fan? <laughs> you know, and and I was like, you're not from Chicago. You don't have family in Illinois. He was like, I don't know. He was like, they're just they're just badass. All right, and that was. <laughs> That was his explanation, you know. And I was like, so when I got drafted, he was one of the first people that that I called, and I was like, "Hey, I'm a bear, right?" And he, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta love that, man. Did you? So, so you you were a Niners fan. Did you get to play against Jerry at all? Against yeah. Jerry Rice? I played against Jerry my my uh, rookie year. He was playing for the Oakland Raiders. For Oakland. I played against him and Tim Brown. Those were two players that I uh, I I really liked growing up. And um, I played against Emmett Smith one my rookie year when he was at the Cardinals. Yeah, you know, so there was there were a few guys. You know, Rich Gannon was there. You know, there were a few guys that I that I got to play with my rookie year that were some some Hall of Famers and legends. Man, gotta love that. Gotta love mm-hmm. that. Another great episode, man. I appreciate Lance for always showing love to the to the show. And we're going to be here every Monday, me and Lance Briggs, breaking down what the Chicago Bears are doing. Again, if you haven't done so, drop a Bear Don because you already know it's big Bear Don energy around here. This is the Chicago Bears podcast. <laughs> you got anything going on? You Anything you want to tell the people about that's coming up for you? Uh, No. I'm. I, you know what? Uh, I will see you all here next Monday. All right? Yes, yes. Hey, on the best pod show out. Do. Best podcast out here, man. Make sure you stay tuned with us and listen live on the ESPN app. As always, y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Right on. Peace. Bear down.